every year when we come close to the end of the liturgical year, the Catholic Church always brings, gives us one of the texts that we can find in one of the Gospels about the end of the world, the end of everything. Today, we have St. Mark. We are in chapter 13, verse 24 to 32. Let me give you the beginning of this chapter, because the beginning, in my opinion, gives us uh, some clues of how we have to interpret today's gospel, which is a little bit complicated because we don't have this language. We do not understand that language. But in the time of Jesus Christ, it was very common, and we find that language in the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Gospels and the, the last book of the Bible, Revelation, is an apocalyptic language, apocalypso in Greek and revelatio in Latin, same thing, revelation. So it's a way to speak that the authors, some of the authors of the, the Bible used to reveal something. So the, that language actually is a way to unveil, that, what, that means revelatio, to unveil, to take the veil and reveal something. So verse one of this chapter, as he was going out of the temple, that's Jesus Christ going out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, teacher, Behold, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. We have to understand one thing here. For a Jew, the temple was everything. It was not only the center of their religious belief, but it was the center of the political life, the economic life. It was everything. It was the foundation of their lives. So what Jesus Christ says to what his disciple is saying is very, very difficult for any Jew to listen. Here is what Jesus Christ says to his, to his disciples. Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left upon another which will not be torn down. Everything is going to be destroyed. To say that is to say that the center is going to be destroyed. The foundation is going to be destroyed completely. And a Jew would say something like, this man is crazy. He is not talking with any sense. You cannot say to me, you would not say to me, Jew, that my center, my foundation is going to be destroyed. Now, what is going to be my center and my foundation? Actually, that the the main question here. You are telling me, you come to me here, or later, later after Mass, and you say, you know, Jesus Christ doesn't exist. That's my center and my foundation. I'm gonna say, go ahead. I mean, you can say whatever you want. He is my center and my foundation. Something like that, this man is listening, and I can understand, I can guess that he is saying, uh, there is not right, there is something wrong with that man who is saying that, that my center, my foundation is going to be destroyed. Now I have to add something and continue. The temple, scholars say, and I have never been in that temple, I'm not going to be in that temple, I have seen some, not even pictures, how can you say that, designs of that temple, designs. And it seemed that it was built in a way that the temple was a rep representation of the entire universe. So for a Jew, when they went into the temple, for the Jew, Jew people, was like actually the center of their life and their entire universe. So when Jesus Christ is saying that is going to be destroyed, it's actually everything everything. 
That's very important to understand. So now let us go to the, to the gospel. It doesn't, Jesus Christ doesn't only say it's going to be destroyed. Now there is a change here. In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. I mean, this is a cosmic event. What is happening here? I cannot go over that, but you can find in Daniel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Revelation, the same language. When the sun darkened, is darkened, and the moon doesn't give its light, and the star falls from the sky, and the powers shake, are shaken, there is a way to talk about one thing. Now I have to say, I have to explain another thing that I explained many, many weeks ago when we began the reading of the gospel according to St. Mark. You may remember that, but I have to say it again. In the concept, in the thought of Mark, and not only him, but the Jewish people, it was an old age and a new age. The old age was under the powers of Satan and demons. And the new age was inaugurated by, Jesus, by the coming of Jesus Christ, and it was under the powers and the influence, if you want, of God. And in St. Mark, we find here on earth that we are not completely in the new age, which means we are not completely under the power of God, but we are not completely under the power of Satan. We are like, we, we experience here like a mixture between both Satan and God. So what St. Mark is describing that one day, when Jesus Christ come from the second time, that day, but well, first he said, we don't know when it's going to happen, so don't worry about that. We don't know, nobody knows. But that day, Satan is going to be defeated for good. And that is going to have a cosmic impact, if you want. It's going to be experienced not only here on earth, not only here, in my heart, in your heart, but in the entire universe. And God is going to take possession of everything. And it's wonderful. It's beautiful, in my opinion. Because he's saying God is the more powerful. So, now, listen. The powers in heaven will shaken. Is the powers, the demonic powers are shaken. Because there now there is a more powerful power. Can I say that? I don't know in English yet. Okay. It's God. Demons and Satans have a huge power. But the Bible is saying there is somebody who has much more power, God. So those powers are shaken because they know that Satan and their demons, his demons, the demons, know that there are somebody more powerful coming who are going to take their place, who are going to be now in the center. They used to be, you want, like in possession of something. Now God is taking them out of the scene and he's going to take possession of everything. And here is what happens in the gospel. And then when the powers are shaken and everything is happening, then they will see, those powers are going to see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. So he's going to talk, come and take everything. This is what the gospel is saying. Now, how can we apply that right now to our spiritual life? Uh, three things I, I have to say, okay? Let us say that the first one is the biblical context. The second one is the Latin Greco context, or Greco-Latin or Roman context. And the last one is 
Bishop Barron's context. Bishop Barron, do you know him? Or have you ever? I heard him saying what I'm going to say at the end, okay? So it wasn't me, it was Bishop. First one, the context of the Bible. The Bible is saying, one day, as I was saying, God is going to take possession completely of everything. Right now, we live in the already, but not yet. This is the way theologians describe how we live. What does it mean? We know that on the cross, Jesus Christ inaugurated the new age, but we cannot experience that fully, completely. One day we are going to experience that completely. Right now we cannot. So we are right now like struggling with those powers, the evil power and the good power you want. We know that the good power, God's power, is more powerful, is God. So we know that, but we have to work every day to make it a reality. It doesn't happen, it doesn't happen uh, just because we want, we have to do it. I don't know if I, I am clear what I'm trying to say. We Christians, let me say it that way, we Christians, you and I, have the mission to make that movement, the movement from the possession of the evil power to the possession of the great power, the power of God, a reality. When we, inside each one of us, we are able to overcome Satan. I think that's very important. We cannot change our society, our church, from the outside to the inside. It should be from the inside to the outside. Every time we are able to conquer, every time we are able to overcome temptation and everything that comes from Satan, we are winning our fight, you know what I mean? So it's a fight that we have to have every day. That has to happen inside us, before outside us, I think. And I think this, that should be the way we Christians live every day. That's the first context. Now, in the Greco-Roman context, for a Greco-Roman person, to read that, I was reading an article about that. For them, the sun and the moon and the stars were gods. So if they're saying that those gods are falling apart, and now that they are moving and they are giving the space to somebody else, they are saying now there is a real God if you want. You know what I mean? A real God. So I was thinking that if we think about the Greco-Roman context, we have to think about things, things that we put in the place of God. Things that we, for different reasons, we put instead of putting God, or things that we put instead of giving God that place. He should be our center. He should be our foundation. We human beings sometimes, not always, I'm not saying that always, we sometimes put things in that place. And we made that as God. We, we made that God, our center and our foundation, our God. That the second invitation for you today, I think, reading that gospel. In the last, in the last one, I read, nah, I didn't read, I didn't read that. I heard what Bishop said, and I think it's beautiful. Bishop Barron. So I want to talk about that. He says in his homily about talking about this gospel that for an, a people from that time, that time, the way to navigate, and I think he's right, I think that the way, they were using the sun, the stars, and the moon to be able to see where they were. Am I correct? I am here, I go there, so they were, the whole 
how do you call them, bodies in heaven, used to give them directions that they point. And they were navigating, using that as directions. Where I want to go, so they were doing all of that. Now imagine if all the sudden you don't have that. So you cannot go anywhere. And he gives an example, the GPS. And I, I like that example. It's like if you go someplace and you don't know how to go and you have the GPS and all the sudden, whoop, you don't have anything, so you are lost. So the invitation is to put a new one, Jesus Christ. The sun, the moon, and the star cannot give you directions anymore. We are in an age where it is Jesus Christ, the one who has to give us direction. And it comes to the first and second point that I was talking, the same thing. God is the most powerful, and if he is the most, the most powerful, we have to put him as our center and our foundation, and if he is our center and our foundation, he is the one who has to give us direction every day. Do not try to find directions for your life using other centers and other foundations. You are going to be lost if you do that. You may do it, but you are going, you are going to be lost. You are not going to find the right path. And maybe you are going to crash. I think that the invitation of today's gospel, remember, Jesus Christ is moving somebody who is very powerful, Satan. And he is taking possession of what Satan used to have. We have to do that every day, a reality in our lives. God has to take possession of us, and in doing so, we have to remove Satan and the demons who can be in us. First one. Second. For a Greco Roman person, sun, moon, star are gods. We have the temptation to put in God's place other things. That's a real uh, danger that human beings have. Put something in the place of God. God, Jesus Christ, is our only center and founda foundation. Second one. And third, if he is the only center, he is the only one who can give, it, give us direction, as Bishop Barron says. We have to go to him for light, directions, and we need to reorient sometimes our life and put everything on Jesus Christ. So let us pray that we may be able to do it, and let us pray that the power of God may take possession of each one of us. Please stand.